Only one kid in history had ever attempted what Benny was about to. And he got eaten. So we were worried. Real worried. Even when Benny brought out the secret weapon. Shoes guaranteed to make a kid run faster and jump higher. PF Flyers. Hey, welcome back. It is the Slate Lace Podcast. We got a great episode for you guys. Uh, for me, it's the most anticipated movie of the summer. We just watched it. It is Nope. Uh, Blair, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah, good. I mean, I'm excited for this one. Um, I think a lot of people are excited for this one just because uh, anytime this man drops something, the world is waiting. So what we do, we get after it. It's uh, Jordan Peele. No so wasted. let's get into the synopsis here. As we said, it is Nope. And it is uh, written and directed by, I believe, mm-hmm. Jordan Peele. Yep. The summary is the residents of a lonely... This is the wrong one. Sorry, guys. I'm not... What, what did it say? I have no idea. No, no this is it. Yeah, yeah. The residents of a lonely glutch... In Inland, California, bear witness to an uncanny, chilling discovery. I don't know what that word is, guys. Sorry about that. But anyways, they bear witness to an uncanny and chilling discovery. Mm-hmm. That pretty much sums it up. But as you know, with Jordan Pitt, you never know what you're going to get. So let's get into our initial thoughts here. Blair, what was your some of your initial thoughts? Um, well, I remember seeing the trailer and stuff. And um, I was trying to not know too much, right? I'm just like, all right, I don't want to know anything, so I just go into this thing, like, excited. Um, and Yeah, well, yeah. with me, obviously we saw the trailer, uh, so it's, it's typical Jordan Peele. You never know what you're going to get, so I went in. I was obviously super excited, but I didn't know. I had no idea. I knew he said he wanted to focus on, like, spectacle and something with the UFO, but that was literally just from an interview I heard. I knew nothing about it. Um, and then even though he gave us that, it could have easily been a twist and a turn, you know, that we weren't expecting. So you got to think back to his past words. Um, you really know. You never know what's going to happen. So Did you feel like you knew it when you saw the trailer? Like you knew... No, because I thought, I'm like, mm, this ain't going to be it. It's going to be a red mm-hmm. herring. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a distraction. I mean, you like, him. Just, they were just gonna, like a mood trailer. You know? They were going to be leading us on it a little bit. So mm-hmm. I definitely didn't expect any of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I was pleasantly surprised with what we got. Mm-hmm. Um, so on that note, um, we aren't going to spoil anything because this movie's fairly new. People are still mm-hmm. going to the theaters to see it. So we're going to give you um, I mean, just our pros, cons, reviews, ratings. And then this might be one that we have to like go back and visit just because of like, you know, you could talk about this again for days. So how many, um, how many days did it take you to finally go in theater and watch it? Uh, I think I went opening night. I went opening weekend. I didn't go opening night. Opening night was a Saturday, right? Um, or it was a Friday. Went, opening night was a Friday. So I went Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. So I went like opening weekend, um, you know, and so it was packed theaters. Mm-hmm. I made a little rookie mistake read the screen backwards so i was in the front thinking i was in the top back corner i was in the front corner uh but it was bad because i was in people's seat i was in people's seat and they was looking at me and i'm looking at them like what Mm, what y'all want and i was like looking i was like are you even kidding me i could not believe i made that mistake guys so it was a rookie they just looked and i kind of figured i'm like oh they must be sitting here maybe on the other end Mm -hmm. but yeah it was a rookie uh a-list mistake I'm ashamed, you know, then you got to do that thing where you get your drink out the cup holder and walk back to your actual seat. It was bad. At least bad. you're not like me. But cause... I still was dead front and I still moved a couple rows back because I knew people weren't going to be in that right. row either. So I didn't want to be just dead front. Even this so. early in the morning when you went? Even that early, yeah. So oh. I still I still moved a couple seats back because I wasn't going to be in the dead front. I just mm-hmm. wasn't going to do it. It's Jordan Peele, y'all. We got to make accommodations. Yeah. It's funny you say that because like if it was me in, in the exact same situation you were in, I would be embarrassed because I'd have to pick up a gang of things to move right after pick up the big yeah. jug of water, two pop. Luckily on this one, I didn't really get nothing crazy. I think I just got a drink, and that's rare. I think I had drink and uh, you some Welchers. Yeah, I had the uh, fruit, fruit the snacks. Welchers. What are you talking fruit about? Fruit snacks. Uh, you gotta say it for the people that don't know. You gotta say it by the brand name. You gotta give the brand name. 
Yeah, so I just had the fruit snacks and a drink, so I was cool. But still, it was bad. It was still like, ooh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so that sucked, but again, nevertheless, enjoyed myself. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get into more of what I thought uh, once we get to these pros and cons here. But just starting with the pros for me, obviously the cast. The cast mm -hmm. hit for me. Uh, it's starring, as you guys know, I'm sorry I didn't say in the beginning, Kiki Palmer, okay. uh, Daniel Kaluuya, Brandon Perea, um, who else is in there? Barbie Ferreira has a little short cameo in there. Um, Steven Yoon, that's a big one I forgot to announce, sorry. And Michael Wincott. Um, so as you know, those are all pretty big, heavy names. I think, honestly, Daniel Kaluuya always brings it. But for me, this was like probably Kiki's best role, to be honest. Like, she kind of made the film for me. She made it like that enjoyable piece because she came in. You know, uh, Daniel's character is a man of few words. Mm -hmm. And she kind of came in and brought that energy. You can see how they play yeah. brother and sister, how they bounce off each other. Yeah. How they're the kind of yin and yang type deal. So I like that. Uh, the cast was great. Uh, cinematography. I, I touch on, I don't really touch on this, but I do touch on it when I really like the way it was shot. Mm -hmm. And this one's great. I love the location, like okay. the desert field. It is in California. Yep. Uh, I like that, like where they chose to shoot it because it's perfect for something like this. You know, shot on a ranch, mm -hmm. this kind of UFO thing. You don't really know what it is. I like that aspect. So the cinematography was great. The location was great. Um, and then just his theme of like making things spectacle. So, or, and UFOs, like unidentified objects, putting, you know, wondering and how we kind of, as a society, make things spectacle anyways. And it's, I can dive deeper into that, but again, mm -hmm. if, we, yeah. if we touch back on it, that's like kind of when the chimp comes into play. Yeah. So it's all these things, like it's these hidden messages within the movie that we obviously can't give away, but I like the theme, the underlying theme of the movie, like I usually do with Jordan Peele, mm -hmm. but this time... It isn't so much based on race. They do talk about, you know, their dad was like the first black uh, horse trainer, I yes. believe, in Hollywood. Yes. So there's some of that, you know, Jordan Peele gonna give you that. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it is just this kind of hidden theme of like un unidentified objects and like what's going on and stuff like that. So yeah. I like that. It was a little bit different. Um, and then the fact that it's a horror, again, not relying on those typical horror tropes. Like it's not no, there's some jump scares, but it's not a ton of that. It's more mm -hmm. just like, the thriller, like, oh snap, what's gonna crack off? So, mm -hmm. those were kind of my pros. Uh, mm -hmm. Blair, did you have any? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was, um, it was solid. Um, I really like, honestly, how every film he introduces something new, yeah. right? Like, he doesn't kind of continue to harp on things. So, obviously, racism, you know, he has in the first film, right? And then the next one is just kind of, I guess, like about us and, like, sort of just, you know, making. Or like, what could we be if we were at like our best potential and yeah. things like that, right? And just the drive and, you know, but each time he's touching on something different, he's like, I'm not going to just sit here and harp on this forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Go back and watch it, you know, if you need a new lesson or whatever. So for, yeah, him to then come in and do this one was cool. Uh, I like Western, so it had a Western feel, mm -hmm. Western vibe to it. You it was know, like Western cool out, low key. It was uh, cool to see that, like the man on the horse, you know, your hero kind of coming in to save the day. Uh, I really love that whole thing. You for sure need another viewing without a yep, doubt. Yep. Um, I like the introduction and how it really got things going. And it jumped off, huh? Yes, it really jumped off. But yeah, it feels, I don't know, to me it feels very Hitchcockian, you know, in the words of you. Uh, because um, when you when you see his film here, you know, obviously for the people that haven't seen it, what you're going to get a feel of is like a a, a slow buildup, right? But it's not a it's not a bad slow buildup. You know, we if you see the trailer, you have an idea about a UFO, right? And so, what? But like literally, like a UFO, not like a space, but like literally an unidentified yes. object. Yes, in the sky. yes, exactly. But what Hitchcock is able to do, and what I think that Peel is very successful at doing as well, is playing with your mind. Right. Like, you know what it is and you know it's coming, but you just don't know when it's coming. Right. And so you keep having this lead up and then like you get to a moment and you're like, are we finally going to see this thing? What what is it that we're really hiding from? And I think one of the bigger moments in that film where that happens, you know, without giving it away is like that scene when he was in the barn. Right. With the um, with the kids. Yep, yep, yep. Right. That's a moment where. I don't know about you, but when I was in the audience uh, on opening night, everybody was like sort of screaming at that point. Mm -hmm, 
thought this is it. Because you think that exactly. So there's the buildup, the messing with your mind. You feel like it's getting ready to go down at this point. Maybe not like the end all be all, right? Like where it's getting ready to end the film because you know it's fairly in the beginning. But you're just like, oh, dang, you don't get that, right? And so then you get lulled to sleep again in a good way, right? So you slowly like let your guard down. Right. Like Sydney says, there's very few jump scares. Right. So, you know, you slowly let your guard down because you're on high alert the whole time. Right. You're like you're expecting a jump scare like in traditional horror, but you're not getting it. So you're like, dang, I guess it's just never going to come. Right. And then when it does, you're just like, oh, wow. okay, dang, I have my guard down. I thought it was. uh, Nope. And so that was what Hitchcock was like really successful at, right? So he was able to really build this suspense over a whole film. And then when it really goes down, it goes down. And so this film was very successful at doing that uh, that as well. Then another thing is for me, like you just said, the cinematography, I love the choices of shots and how um, we constantly look up at the sky, you know, and we find creative ways to kind of get the camera to pan up there and look up because again, it's all about looking up. Um, And then another thing I like actually has nothing to do with the film, but it does at the same time is the um, the posters and how they presented it and how it's like kind of all over the place again in Los Angeles for us. You know, it could be depending on where you are, but uh, just, you know, it's just creative. It's just like different ways to use nope, you know, having them constantly like looking up. Right. And it's just like getting you thinking like, dang, what is it really all about? And then, it, you know, you get in the seats and then you get you go ahead and you find out. Um, so just a very interesting um, and intriguing film. Uh, to me so I I do have a lot of positives I could sit here and go all day about it but I mean those are like kind of the big ones for me I'm a western man so he he got me with that yeah and then uh, also I touched on Kiki Palmer's performance but also Steven Yeun was like really good in this Mm -hmm. as well like he was selling it you know he they explored his backstory a lot more than the other characters but like his acting was was top notch so I also want to give out a shout out to him because yeah he made a lot of that uh film work um, especially just with what everything he had going on so shout out to those two daniel kaluuya is always great as well but just yep. those two specifically really made me like feel the movie just a tad bit more um but where there's good there's bad um let's get into some of the cons um there's bad there's bad but it's not really that bad because you'll hear what i have to say with this con um, you okay there? Blair on the it went down, <laughs> it went down the wrong and way. The water. Guys are going down the wrong mm-hmm. pipe, huh? Yep. Shout out to Crystal. <clears throat> um, but anyway, yeah, so for me, the con, if I, again, this is one of those ones where I really have to nitpick the con because mm-hmm. I like the movie. I thought it was great. But when I first left the theater, I just felt like, oh, it was a good movie, but it was just all right. Then as I sat on it, I was like, okay, no, I really like the movie. I think I even texted you, Mm -hmm. and I was in my transition phase where I was like, no, I'm starting to really like it Mm -hmm. when I was talking to you about it. But you were just like, yeah, it was good. But we were both kind of just like, meh. Yeah. So it was one of those movies where it don't hit you right away, Mm -hmm. That, but once it marinates, Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, that was a really good film. And then Mm -hmm. for me, if it's really top notch, A++++, it has to, you have to leave the theater like, you know, clapping like uh, True. True. Dang, what's that mean? Now I can't even do it because I don't even remember. Oh, um, no Martha, for oh, happiness. Oh, okay. Like you gotta leave clapping like that. Um, <clears> I was know. thinking of Martha Stewart doing the. Oh yeah, the Academy Awards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one's good as well. <laughs> yeah. So either one, you know, mm-hmm. you gotta leave that theater feeling it right away, feeling all the emotions, yeah. feeling like, wow, I just seen something magnificent. And that's yeah, the but you don't. You got when you watch this first two, but this one. Nah, amazing. I didn't get that. Well, we'll, we'll, this is, well, I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, but that the there you'll get when you know you watched a great movie. Yeah. But in my sense, like this one, I was just like, eh, mm-hmm. it was cool. I was like, mm-hmm. I liked it, but I was missing something. And then as I sat okay. and I thought and I watched people's reaction and I was on Instagram, I was like, oh, no, I see it. Mm-hmm. And then it hit me like a day later where I was like, nah, it was really good. Mm-hmm. So if I'm nitpicking again, this is me nitpicking and digging for a con. Mm-hmm. I would have to say that it don't really hits you how great the film is. It's like mm-hmm. a little slow burn. Even mm-hmm. at the, even when it's done, you sh- it's still kind of just sitting with you and you're just mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm just kind of playing. But then as you dig deeper and you find out like the hidden meanings of things, the backstory, yeah. I think it really does come around. So it just doesn't 
like hits you right away with how with it with its greatness. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's like my only con. It's just like you have to wait for things to marinate a minute. And it's um Oh, and then another thing, it can seem like a lot's going on at one time. And mm -hmm. I think that's why it hits you a little bit later, and that's why the movie is so great once you think about it. So that could be another con. Like just too many themes mm -hmm. being thrown at you um, as an audience. But again, I mean it worked for me. But yeah. I'm just saying, you know, I, yeah. got, I gotta pick something. Yeah. And so it's a lot. It's a lot being thrown at you. It's a lot to shuffle through. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, you just it doesn't like feel like a great film like right yeah. off the bat. Um, so for me, I honestly don't really have any cons for it. I really did um, enjoy the film. I think for me, uh, two things. One, I did uh, forget to mention is um, I really love how. Uh, he treats it as like everyone that's watching the film is intelligent and we don't really need breakdowns on things. Right. Like, I don't know if people like notice it that much, but uh, if you look at a film, um, for example, uh, Jurassic Park or something. Right. Um, when something comes into play, like a dinosaur or a shark or, you know, like a monkey or whatever. Right. And like, somehow like their behavior or their patterns change right we bring in this doctor to sort of explain what it's all about and what we're getting ready to get involved in right you know even in like movies where it's like end of the world 2020 whatever right then you look at uh jordan peele and you would think you're going to get the same thing right but you don't you're you're watching this film and you're realizing there's no one that's actually explaining to you really what's going on. You really just have to use your eyes, pay attention and sort of figure things out as you, as they go. Right. Because like the, the main characters, they don't really understand what's happening in the beginning, but then they slowly like watch things take place, you know, and they try to like dissect animal behavior and they sort of kind of figure out a way for, you know, for it all to work. Right. But no one is actually like an expert and is like, hey, so what UFOs actually do, right? Like you didn't get that. And I think that that was a big plus to the film for me, you know, because like I said, it was just kind of on us to figure it all out. And if you didn't, then go watch it again or go watch it a third time. Um, so that I, it's just tough to to really nitpick at it. The The thing that I did or like really sat with me was right was like I was watching it and I was just like dang, like, I feel like this is his worst film, right? But that doesn't mean it's a bad film because to me, it's a great film. It's just the worst of the three, right? And like, you would argue that in the order in which the films came is the order of like how good it is to how bad it is, right? But I mean, are we going to sit here and really say that Nope is terrible, Right. Like, are we going to really sit here and pull straws and be like, yeah, nope, like really was not it. We're going to sit here and say us was like really not it because it was the second worst. That's just what happens when you make like so many good films and you run them off back to back to back. Uh, in reality, he's got three hits, but they just happen to go in that order and how good they are. But they're all good. Yeah. Um, so no real cons then. right? Not for me. I mean, I kind of agree, but, you know, I had to say what I had to say. Mm -hmm. But it definitely is in third place, I'll say that, of the three. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, not by much, and it's still mm -hmm. a great film that makes you think. Yeah. But with the intricacy of this film, because mm -hmm. I think this one made you think a lot, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Then Get Out was pretty straightforward. Us mm -hmm. had you thinking a little bit. Us mm -hmm. was like, okay, us, what's cracking up? Mm -hmm. uh, but this one did make you think, and I think that's why, like, as we'll see in the ratings, the critics like this one a lot more than the audience. Mm, the peeps, okay. the peeps, the peoples. The peeps, the peeps, like, the peoples. What? Mm -hmm. And I think it's because, you know, it, uh, it's not always the smartest audience, you know? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I ain't saying I'm one of them because sometimes I'd be like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. But you'll see in these ratings that that's kind of the case. Um, so, first, let's get into the tomatoers. But then that probably adds into why I was talking about how he doesn't have someone explain things and to dumb it down for you. Mm -hmm. So he don't care. Like, mm -hmm. well, you should, you should keep up. <laughs> yeah, keep up. Watch it again. You'll get it. So the, the note uh, tomato was 81%. Okay. That's, that's very good. Mm -hmm. um, and then the audience score was 69. Dang. Yeah. But it definitely IMDb, ain't no 69. No. IMDb, 7.5. 
So they kind of still liked ain't it, a seven point five. Um, they liked it a little better than, you know, the tomato audience, mm-hmm. but 7.5 and 81%, those are still relatively good ratings, mm-hmm. but we got to get into the only rating that matters mm-hmm. and that is the slate rates. So I'm going to go to Blair on this first. Blair, what you got? One of five entertainment. Five. Entertainment. I you got know what? Two. No. I knew you no. were going to change it. No, yeah, because I keep forgetting five is basically just like legendary as far as entertainment goes. Nah, I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't think I have because, I mean, five is just, you know, tough to come by. For me, that's like Hitchcock, you know, Hitchcock five. So so I'm going to go I'm going to go four and a half. And a half, and I was shocked that like, he was about to give it a five because I wasn't even gonna give it a five. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go four and a half as well. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I've given a fi- I've given out fives, and I feel like people gonna be like, "But you get a five to this movie?" So mm-hmm. I'm trying to think what I gave a five to. But this is definitely a four and a half. Johnny Capalawa, I think you gave it for that. Back on board. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give it. To, uh, I can't give this one a five. I just can't do it. Okay. It wasn't boring. Trust me, it's gonna hit the nah. ground running. Like y'all gonna be interested. Like and everyone said, was laughing in the theater. And we said at the beginning it jumped off. So mm-hmm. it's going to jump off. It's just not a five. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 4.5 as well. Blair inter- originality. Five. Me too. Five. So I knew we'd have relatively the same score. Yeah. I mean, well, he brought, in a, he, he brought in a whole new element and he sort of like played with different genres, right? He played with crazy. suspense. He played with Western, which is a whole genre within itself. You know, the whole yeah. UFO horror. He like kind of blended it all together. So, I mean, yeah, it was special. Look, at the end of the day, Jordan Peele did his thing again. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's always going to get the comparison to his older movies mm-hmm. because he just did such legendary work. Yeah. And, you know, great reward, you get scrutinized. Like, mm-hmm. what's that? The the Batman thing? Saying? No, it's it's Spider Man with great power yeah, comes great whatever, responsibility. Yeah. You know, I don't watch those superhero stuff. <laughs> You're lucky I got that far. But, yeah, great, <laughs> but I mean, I knew you was going with it. Great responsibility. Exactly like that. So. <laughs> He made some powerful films. He's going to be responsible to make some more powerful ones. That's and true. And they're going to hold you to that standard every That's time. true. I tell my athletes um, that all the time. You've already shown me what you're capable of, so why would I expect less from you? Facts. If anything, I'm going to expect more, especially if you've been here in multiple years. Like, facts. He, been, he got the skin in the game. Now we're going to keep mm-hmm. holding you. We need you to elevate. Um, but at the end of the day, he did his thing. Yeah. Uh, my my like closing thoughts really is, is um, I was watching the movie, you know, and I was uh, with Cole and I was just like telling him like before it started and me and him were sitting two rows from the back and um, yeah. And there wasn't like a single seat open in the house. And uh, I remember telling him, you know, I was like, man, people say like going to movies is dead, you know, like um, you're going to go and watch it on Netflix and and um, people don't really go out to watch theater uh, to watch movies in theaters anymore. Yeah. And then I and then we both were just kind of like, but that's not true. It's actually that people are done watching bad movies. Mm-hmm. People are tired of getting up, you know, yeah, to to watch, you know, Space Ranger 16. Right. Fast 47. Fast 47. Space Rangers isn't even a movie. But you know what yeah. I mean? Like they just go and they can like they're done with that. Mm-hmm. If you can reach the audience on a on a commercial level but still give them information uh, that can kind of sort of like better themselves, give them something insightful, give them things to think about and give them things to learn from, but also make it entertaining and fun and make you laugh and make you cry and feel like all the emotions at once, people will still come to the theater to watch movies. Yep. We will come see it. I agree with that 100%. Um, luckily, I went the next day and then I went early, so it wasn't that too, uh, you know, too many body to body, but again, it's still yeah, but you still had that in morning, early in the morning, exactly. but like, that's my point. People coming out, and yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. people are always gonna go see something in theater um, if it's good. And he's remember, he's captured that audience from the very first, exactly. From get out, he's had he has a loyal audience that's gonna come back to the theater, mm-hmm. that's just the reality of the situation. Mm-hmm. But I remember when I was first seeing get out, um, man, I didn't even see it first, not even first month, yeah. I saw it, okay, well, it had to be the first month because it didn't leave theaters. But yeah. I didn't see it in theater, but it wasn't no first week, two week. But there was, like, little whisper. People were like, this movie, get out. This movie, get out. Did we see it together? No, nah, we didn't. I went with two other people. Oh. I might have saw it again with y'all because I was, like, literally I left them, like, with my mind blown. So somebody was like, you got to see it. My friend was mm-hmm. like, you're going to like this. And I was mm-hmm. like, it's, 
I was like, I seen the trailer. It looks odd. I don't know if I'm going to like it. She's like, trust me, you're going to like it. So I went in. They had the little banging red bone. That's the first scene. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, they got some bops. And literally from then on, I was in that theater like, this just blew my mind. Like, it made me fall in love with filmmaking again. Mm-hmm. It made me, like, realize that anything in your head that you can't get out, you can find a way to put it on paper and get it on a screen. Like, mm-hmm. it literally, it did wonders. It changed, yeah. like, the course of my, like, creative life, not my mm-hmm. actual life. Yeah. But, yeah, with that saying, I think he captured so many fans that week mm-hmm. with that first film mm-hmm. that, yeah, we're going to be out to flock the theaters, and I'm one of them. I'm going to flock anytime. Yeah. I was ready to rally that night, but I had some other things to do, but I was ready yeah. to go. Like, let's go. <laughs> You know, but anything else, Blair, Mm-mm. before we wrap, um, nope, it's a go. It's two thumbs up for us. Mm-hmm. You know, run, don't walk to the theater, go see mm-hmm. it now. It may be one that we have to talk about a little bit deeper if we got the time, but we do have to get into some sneakers because I am upset. Um, I got some things to get off my chest with that. But anyways. Um, yeah, and Yeezy days in a couple days. So, yeah, we got to get back on that. But I've seen a lot of heat coming to the screen. Uh, I went to the movies, what, like two days ago, and it's a lot of things coming out that I'm going to be very interested in talking about. So stay tuned. It is the Slate Lace Podcast. We out.